what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, dudes and dudettes everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Back at it again with another Furycraft episode this weekend. And happy that you've hung around with us for this long. And if you're new here, welcome to you all. So I'm Jack. Ben's over in this square over there. We got Minogi, which is behind us. And Boris over in this corner, which is our furry little friends who usually speak to us when we're on camera and usually have a lot to say for themselves. But I think they're going to be probably a little bit silent today as we're going to be doing most of the talking for once. So back at it with the list once again for Fury Craft, where we're going to be talking about the darker side of Power Rangers. Maybe these would be things which were in the news, maybe some things you remember, and some things which may be a little bit surprising to you. So without further ado, let's get ready to... Run! <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to dumb it down for this week. But obviously... Yeah. When it comes to Power Rangers, it's all gravy, all rainbow sunshine, and definitely have some fond memories watching Power Rangers over the years, which has been a pinnacle of my childhood and one which I've very much enjoyed, and the same as Ben as well. But the older we get, the more as adults you get a bit more inquisitive. So we like to dive into sort of the more darker side. We like to get into the whole nitty gritty, which is why the channel exists. And we like to get into the whole little mini details, which we find very interesting. And maybe you do as well. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, obviously, we said in the last episode that a lot of logic or whatever in terms of Power Rangers it's just lost like there is no rhyme or reason for a lot of things no it's just there for the sake of plot yeah and of course. i think the one that i completely skimmed over because i never really tied the two until i saw this article today is that in operation overdrive of course the big bad is thrax is the son of Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa. How the fudge did they have time to get the itchy bidgy going when they were locked away for so long? I and then know. by the well, end, unless they were awake all that time, they had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> well, the logic would be that they must have had the child before Zordon locked them away, imprisoned wherever the fudge they were. And the child was locked away separately in another space dumpster because reasons. Yes. But like he was a child. Like how the how do you justify locking up a child? Yes, they may be the devil spawn of a evil couple, but it doesn't mean that I'm allowed to do that but, to every single But just now you're gonna have like <laughs> snow you're gonna have all the snowflakes out today going, Oh, you shouldn't lock up a child. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> it's just like, I mean, given the fact that Thrax isn't the most appealing looking character of all, it's definitely one that will haunt my nightmares for a little while. <laughs> but it's just this mentality of that, oh yeah, you're the child of this evil couple. I'll just lock you in a way in a separate space dumpster a, a far apart from the galaxy just because. And then, obviously, Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed get goodified, as I like to call it, by the end of the Power Rangers movie. So, what do they do? Like, how do they do they not go off to find their child? Even when they were set free, they didn't even bother going to find the child. So, what the hell? Well, they maybe forgot about their existence in all that time. <laughs> <laughs> God almighty, it's a good job that they don't have child protective services for villains. Oh, no, I would love to be on a fly on a wall for those meetings, though. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So but... with, like, as this, like, as this whole goes on, a few little ones, so, like, me and Ben, we're probably just going to jump back and forth, so maybe I'll do one, Ben does one, and we'll see along as we go. But there was something really interesting, which kind of is tied in. There was a few... Points which the source material does come from Screen Run, which has been, like we were saying to me earlier, it's, it is a very good source, but it's not 100% accurate. But with a few points, you have to do multiple research on the same ones. And so far, this one, which I've researched, seems to be um, 
it seems to be consistent throughout. But with obviously when Power Rangers first started, which Ben knows a bit more about the origins than me. So wasn't it kind of, wasn't it like the studio bought the stock from the Japanese TV show to use, wasn't it? As far as I'm aware, and I can probably be completely wrong, but I think it was just that Bandai, the toy company, is the ones that own the rights to to a degree. Uh, I think... I don't fully understand the logistics behind it, but I think because of the fact that the TV show from Japan had been going on for so much longer, there was a bit of more wiggle room for them to translate it for America because there's only so many years before companies can sort of get their foot in the door and make their own adaptations of things. Well, I suppose uh, you could probably guess they probably had some money behind them when they started doing the Americanized version of Power Rangers. Well, yeah, I mean, Bandai's probably been making toys for God knows how long regardless, so they definitely had enough money in the bank to make a deal with the Super Sentai, the original Power Rangers. But obviously, I don't know, it's it's an odd one regardless, because they picked up the, the moment where it's Mighty Morphin, but that's like 30 years into the timeline of the whole Super Sentai thing, where it all is supposed to connect in some bizarre way. But because Bandai only got to that point, it's like uh, we have to try and s create plot somehow. Yeah, for sure. I don't think that's really something which we're going to understand even in the future. I don't even think we'll get an explanation, to be honest. But no. there you go. It's just Japan. So, well, there's a few things which a few have been consistent throughout, which is the money situation. Now, it's known that on Mighty Morphin especially, they were horrendously tight with money. They were horrendously tight with the budget. And mm -hmm. I think they only had a small budget, well, from what they're saying anyway. But they didn't want to, you could tell just by some of the costumes and so on, they didn't want to fork out a lot of money for a lot of like the set, the costumes and so on. And this comes from um, Amy Jo Johnson, who was the Pink Ranger in Mighty Morphin, who told the podcast no, called No Pink Spandex, that's really difficult to say, called No <laughs> Pink Spandex, the podcast, said that for the money-wise, I actually don't think this is that bad, but they were paid $600 a week. I don't find that all that bad, to be honest. But then again, America has been more expensive than it is here. Well, I mean, given the fact that this was in the 90s as well, I mean, it's not bad, but also the fact that they are actors, that like they expect a higher rate, but rate also, of I pay. Think literally all of them were newbies as well to the acting industry as well, I think. As far as I'm aware, yeah, I think it was their first time for anything. Like, it was their first official roles. But, I mean, $600, that's not really that bad. Like, it could be a hell of a lot worse. I suppose so, yeah. But, like, one thing which which kind of brings into focus how tight they were, that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like the series, they only hired stunt doubles after the actors started to suffer breathing difficulties in the mask. And I think there was a few cases of some of the actors passing out. And when yeah. they realized, oh, the actors, are, oh my God, they're having like breathing difficulties, passing out, whether we better hire some stunt doubles. But it was only after they started suffering health problems for a bit of time that they hired the stunt doubles. How See, horrendous is that? Well, I'm just trying to get over the fact that why have they just hired stunt doubles? Why not just modify the masks? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to be diff like pain in the ass, but I mean, I know it can't be easy making props. Let's give them that. But the thing is, they could have easily have made like the lip area on the mask. Because the thing is with the Mighty Morphin ones, <sighs> it's Mighty Morphin, it's Turbo. There's only a few of them that actually have lips on the mask, which I never understood anyway. But they could have easily have made it like a meshy layer. So from a distance, it looks still like solid. But for the actors, it would have been able to breathe through and just do what they needed to do. Well, I know later on they tried to sort of rework the masks because there's a little feature in the um, in the film as well, the Mighty Morphin film, where they showed you the inside of the mask when they had some, when they were trying to build like. Uh, these small fans inside the mask and yeah. so on and have a bit more padding so they could breathe a lot more easier. But 
Only thing is, there's no air filtration system in that no. thing at all, and you've just got these tiny little fans, which most of the time didn't even work. <laughs> of course not. I mean, again, it's 90s technology. Like, it's. I think the only thing that we were good at in the 90s was making indestructible cell phones, and that's about it. Oh, yeah. Like, do you remember the old Nokias? Those things were indestructible. <laughs> And now you've got iPhones which break at the smallest little drop. <laughs> yeah. But, God, oh my. I mean, the thing is, like, I understand they were probably on a tight budget, but for God's sake, they were making a lot of money from toys. So, what the hell were they being so tight about? I have no idea, unless they couldn't find, like, I don't know. Because sometimes, I'm not sure if they were still doing it back in the day, but I think it was when. Kind of like the, George, like the George Lucas plan where he financed the film by himself. And I'm not sure if they did the same because George Lucas financed Star Wars by taking out a massive loan with the bank. So I'm not sure maybe there was a similar thing going on there. But it's just if they only had limited budget. But still, like even there was a case, I think, where it was either, I think it was the Pink Ranger and the Blue Ranger, which... Near, I think they were nearly electrocuted in one episode, I think, behind the scenes. They were nearly electrocuted. God, it's just like... Being a power range is dangerous, let alone like fighting the villains. You're fighting the freaking set. Yeah. And I was talking to the Blue, Ra Blue Ranger as well. My God, that bloke has had his struggles in his life. He has had some struggles, which... Uh... Oh, yeah, what was his name again? L luckily, I've got my notes. Uh, David... Yost or David Yost, I think. Is I think name? it's Yost. Yost. Yeah. Was it Yost? I'm just going to say Yost. But mm. David Yost, the Blue Ranger. Um, I didn't know this properly till I started researching it, but he actually suffered horrendous abuse from like I'm not sure if it was the cast, but it was definitely like people in the crew and maybe the cast as well. Like with um, because he suffered from a lot of homophobia. When he was on set, and that was the reason why he left Zio in the end. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a sad thing that obviously it wasn't very welcoming. We're lucky now that it's now 2021 and it's a lot more open minded society. But it's shocking to think that's only 30 years ago that people were just being treated like crap just because of who they preferred to be with. Like, it's yeah. such, a biz such a bizarre thing. Yeah, because if you, ever you guys want any lowdown on uh, like Power Rangers in general, where they speak to the actors and everything, go check out the podcast, No Pink Spandex. It, you actually get quite good source material from the actors' mouths themselves. And it was like a direct quote from that podcast where he said, and I'm not going to use the word, I'm just going to spell it out because I'm not sure if I like, will get in trouble. So I think he said like the reason why he walked off the set of Power Rangers Zio was, and I quote, I had been called a F A double G O T too many times. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I And then the poor guy like went to seek therapy for like his sexuality. I mean the poor bloke, like it shouldn't come to that. Like I'm so sorry for the guy. Yeah, I mean the even sadder thing is like Still in America, it's not too commonplace, but there are still a lot of states that have these straight camps that deal with these sort of things, and I don't understand how it's an issue. Like, it's not a problem. No. You, like, whatever it is that you are attracted to, that's you. Like, go for it. Yeah. As long as Although you don't start... It does kind of make sense why they started using the young kid as the boy, as the Blue Ranger. It does kind of make a bit of sense, or is that just coincidence, do you think? I think it was just, it could have been the first, I got a feeling, I could be wrong, but that kid was either like the director's son or somebody's son, because he's way too young compared to the rest of them to just happen to be there. Like, because the majority of like Ranger teens were comprised of people the same age group, young teenagers, and then it's Zio's the one that's the most confusing and conflicting of all. But I still want to know how when he how he goes from a kid to when he morphs into a full grown adult. Hmm. How? I mean, there's one of two possibilities I've been trying to rack my brains with. It's either one, it ages him up temporarily, which would explain his like fighting reflexes, or two, it just adds in synthetic limbs to like 
add in the like gaps if that makes sense. So it's like a mech suit. Well, I was wondering, is how did the how did the boy like the young boy ranger come about again? I can't remember. I can't remember either. It's been so long since I watched Zio, but it's just. I think it was down to. I think the the reason was that for some reason it couldn't sync with the original Blue Ranger, so it had to find somebody else, and it was just convenient that the child picked it up. Yeah, exactly. But, but one thing I want to nitpick with Power Rangers is mm. a very twisted thing is Tommy getting brainwashed. And even though they state it in this article for Screen Rant that is in Zeo, he's also brainwashed in Mighty Morphin, if you think about it. Like, oh, yes, because like, when he first came... Yes, yeah, I yeah. see now. But that's kind of a really screwy thing that the poor guy's been brainwashed more often than the friggin' Winter Soldier. <laughs> like, I mean, the guy's what? 16, 17, give or take, in Mighty Morphin. And then it comes to, like, Zeo, they're about early 20s, give or take. So in the span of, like, three or four years, he's bra been brainwashed a, a couple times to be someone else's weapon of destruction. And it's like, what the hell? Like, why a teenager? Like, they've got enough things going on in their head, let alone this. Yeah, I've heard... I, I was just briefly skimming through that, and, yeah, found that, like, they had... I think... Power Rangers, the original, suffered from a lot of censorship issues at the start when they were filming, I think, because they had a lot of complaints from, like, parents, which wasn't a freaking surprise when you actually look back on it. <laughs> well, I mean... This I mean, makes Zed. Me... Zed was straight-up scary when I was younger. He was terrifying. He was like a Freddy... Uh, Freddy Krueger. What call it? A, um, a child's Freddy Krueger, almost. <laughs> He does yeah. have that look. Yeah, no, I can understand that. But this is why I feel like cancel culture has pretty much come from our childhood. Like, every single time there's a little bit something wrong with a fight scene in any cartoon or TV series when we were kids. Or a skunk in Looney Tunes, just saying. Oh, God. Like, that was the most recent one, which made me laugh. But it was just like, growing up, I remember that there was a petition against getting South Park cancelled, not once, not twice. I think it was at least three times because of, like, stupid, like, jokes. And it's like, yeah, but it isn't really for kids. It's for, like, teenagers and young adults. And, yeah, but, fat, yeah, well, yeah, it's not aimed at kids. And first, why are you letting your kids watch it? Again, this is why I hate cancel culture, because it's like, if you're going to get... They contradict themselves at every turn. <laughs> If you're going to get butt hurt over the idea of something you don't like, just don't watch it. Just don't watch it. Like, nobody and I forgot to say, you. Tom and Je Tom and Je in Tom and Jerry, Tom in some episodes was smoking bloody cigarettes, for God's sake. We didn't care. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, to be fair, there have been dodgy moments with kids' TV series. Regardless, yeah. this is why we're doing today's chat. But it just boggles my mind that this is what we do as a society these days, is that instead of going, yeah, I don't like that, I'll just watch something else, I go, I don't like that, I don't want that on the TV. Well, don't right. bloody watch it. Yeah, this is it. I mean, just I mean, just like, I don't watch Love Island. I freaking hate Love Island, but I'm not going to go out of my way to try and cancel it. I just will flip over the channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well... Yeah. Well, like ever, ever since we, ever since we're like talking of like can, uh, talking of cancel culture, I just I still want to ask that question to you guys. If any of you want to cancel anything, why didn't you have a problem with it years ago? I'm just saying. Why do you have a problem now? But swiftly moving on from that, before that turns into another video in itself, which will probably be another one later on down the line if I think about it now. But there has been unfortunately. Um, one thing which I'm not sure it could... I mean, I think it was stated by the director that it was just pure coincidence, which I'm not completely convinced, but it is, does seem very coinc coincidental if it is. But we had, like, when we were talking last week about the controversy with the Black Ranger being black and the Yellow Ranger, which were, at the time was being played by a, Chin I think she was a Chinese actress, I think? Yeah, Asian-American. 
Yeah, so is that a bit of a coincidence or direct racism? I'm not sure. It was an iffy one regardless, because like I say, the other thing as well is, was that the Red Ranger was played by someone that was meant to be Native American, which again is a very iffy line to walk. Yeah. I think the only one that technically wasn't a racist colour at the time was Tommy, because he was a Green Ranger, and then in the movie he becomes white ranger so like he does like conform eventually to the racist color scheme i think billy being bl like blue was the only color that you couldn't make being racist or sexist ish no that's very true i mean well, mind you greens not really is it no but again it what he wasn't well he was green for a while but then like i say he became the white ranger and yeah but although go back to the go back to the yellow ranger I'm like because i remember at first like for the really old ones i can't remember if i think she was in a, a few episodes but mainly from the pilot i remember the original the original actress for the yellow ranger which i i'm sorry if i get her name wrong i apologize i don't know how to say her name but i think it's foy 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 trang i think it's a very funny name. I'm very mm. sorry if I get it wrong. Uh, T H U Y. I'm not sure how you say it. The original Yellow Ranger, who was an Asian actress, who unfortunately in 2001 ended up taking her life. God rest her soul at the age of 27. And mm. so that, hence the reason. If you wanted to know the reason why we suddenly have a different actress, well, eventually, like as like time wore on, but I could. It's just I can't remember why. She, I can't remember if she just decided she didn't want to be in it, and then they got the other actress. I just, it was kind of, never, it was just never explained. There's a lot of things in Power Rangers with two different actresses playing the same Power Ranger. I don't know. I mean, that's the one thing that I wish they would explain a little bit better. I know it's for kids, but kids do get attached to characters quite easily, but they just see very Being easily. Even as just... kids, they'll go. That's not the same person. <laughs> no, no. But then again, they never really explained like how some rangers are able to use multiple powers at the same time and be various rangers just because they have been. Oh, let's not get into that again, because <laughs> that's a whole video in itself. It is. Like, it's just the bloody morphing some... grid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but one thing I think is probably the most bizarre thing within Power Rangers itself is the concept of the Time Rangers where theory is that they basically scan the timeline in to ensure that nothing corrupts the timeline. So we were trying to figure out last week how does RPM get followed by Samurai if it was a dystopian play uh, existence and then somehow everything's back to normal, theory going is that the Time Rangers are the ones that basically detect these things like random blips, so like RPM, and create a divergent timeline, cr thus creating a different multiverse. So basically, every time that there is a cataclysmic event that revolves around a new ranger team, it diverts off to create a new timeline and keeps their timeline intact. But the thing is, that screws with so much because who gives them the right to screw about with time in such a way when the irony being the Time Force Power Rangers is to stop such things from happening, if that makes sense. But then again, actually saying that, it's just brought a question in my mind. If already they're in the year... Uh... 3000 mm -hmm. like in the year 3000 having a busted moment <laughs> for god's sake <laughs> shut up uh don't say that again but if they're living if they're living in the year three triple o <laughs> when they're living in that time if like they know if they already like if they would have already in that timeline sorted out already all the blips which have already happened, does that mean that if they're... It's like a butterfly effect. If they're from that year and they go back, 
to sort out those little blips, which for some reason seem to be only in the year 2001, um, would that like kind of contradict what like their whole timeline in a way if they keep screwing about with time like maybe some of those things wouldn't have happened i just it's... i don't know because i love time travel i love it to death but, but it is so God. conflicting because everybody has their own interpretation and so far the only one that makes a slight bit of sense is endgame's version where they basically say that it can't affect your current present because going back creates a whole divergent, thus creating a whole new reality. But then that whole new reality basically nullifies the whole reason of, for going back in the first place. Okay, if, yeah, yeah. Because the way I see it is that you go back in time to prevent something so then you don't end up with what you've got at the moment. But if going back means that you create a whole new timeline, that means that when you go back this way to where you came from, that still exists. There is no change. But up here, there is a new change because of the new reality. But surely it would affect the present then. But that's my point, is the fact that it's conflicting. Because the two concepts being that if time... If the time ranges are basically preventing things like RPM and the dino charge and all the other variants of power rangers from rpm onwards from creating cataclysmic change to the point where it doesn't create the time ranges timeline then how come every time they make a change it creates a new reality that doesn't affect their reality but somehow allows them to exist but then i would argue i would argue that there would be another timeline in time force that if they go back in time to sort out all the blips destroy all the baddies, everything like like everything that pretty much that uh, another group of Power Rangers would have to go up against. If like they do all that with absolute 100% success, wouldn't that kind of nullify wouldn't that kind of nullify like though all the different sets of Power Rangers even existing in the first place? So would they be the only set of Power Rangers in a certain timeline? So maybe there is no Power Rangers, it's just time force. Well, this is why it's so confusing to try and figure out. Because, like you say, if they're the ones that are able to go back in time and change certain things... Now, what's the point of all the, the other Power Rangers existing? Which is where the divergent timeline thing comes into play. But again, like, what's the point then? Because if the divergent thing is a thing, that would explain, that would logically mean that all these teams should coexist in the same timeline... So there would be no need for the Time Force Rangers anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like it reminds me of the grand. It reminds me of the grandfather paradox. You, if like the grandfather paradox is yeah. where say like your grand say like your grandfather is a big bad bad guy, like the most evil whatever, and like say you have to go back in time to kill your grandfather. But if you go back in time to kill your grandfather, he wouldn't have given birth. To, he wouldn't have, basically wouldn't have given birth to your father, which means you would not be born. Which means that he couldn't have died, and therefore this event wouldn't have happened. This is the grandfather paradox. <laughs> yes. Also known as the bootstrap paradox, which is a hell of an explanation. And again, it's one of these things where you just think... <sighs> Yeah, although the yeah, because like whenever you got to do anything, whenever you do anything with trying to have, try and bleh, that was really fucking hard to say. Time travel. Time travel. You have to re refer back to the grandfather paradox. So it's kind of something which kind of can set you on the right path, but at the same time, it's a paradox with Power Rangers. If you go, if they go back in time, like obviously up to that point when they get to the year three thousand, all the other pa sets of Power Rangers would have existed in that timeline, obviously. But then when they go and when they're back there, they go back through the timeline, sort all that mess out. But then that means Power Rangers pretty much doesn't exist. Yes. The, I just. The only thing I did like about the Time Force was the actual design of the weaponry and the Zords. But the rest of it made zero sense. 
yeah, kind of like when you were telling me about the Quantum Ranger, which I'm still trying to get my head around. <laughs> yeah, so that I the thing is, the ending to Time Force was the biggest pile of poop I could never understand <laughs> that the pink ranger stays back in 2001 because she falls in love with the ancestor to her fiance who was the original red ranger that becomes like I i'm trying to figure out what so, the... like the, so the quantum ranger is the ancestor of the original red ranger I'm just trying to get this figured out. The Quantum Ranger and the original Red Ranger is the ancestor to the guy that becomes the Red Ranger in 2001 for Time Force. Yeah. But if we go by the logic that the timeline has to be consistent, if she stayed in the past, then that would make her how many variants of grandmother to the guy she was originally the fiancé to. Oh my god! So again, like it's iffy, so iffy. It's so iffy. Like I'm wondering whether he knew it originally. That's why he basically was so close to her in the first place because he had to make sure he existed. It's like a John Connor moment for Power Rangers because if he didn't exist, he wouldn't have died. She wouldn't have been motivated to go back and chase Rancic because Rancic was the one that killed him and hopped up all the way to 2001. That's the reason why she went to 2001 with the team in the first place to get rid of Rancic. <laughs> Sorry, I love time travel. I, I don't fully understand it, but I understand it enough to try and explain it to you guys and to Jack. But, but time travel changes like from film to film, series to series. At least with Endgame, they had an established set of rules. At least, but when until it comes they to, break them. But when it comes I to think... when it comes to time travel, I don't even know if we've done a whole video just on time travel yet. No, no, which I... is something which will take a. It may be a part one and a part two. <laughs> it might be a part three as well, because I'm damn sure there's plenty enough time travel movies that conflict one another. We could spend at least three episodes doing. Because what have we spoken about? We've done, well, obviously we've been doing Time Force, Quantum Leap, Endgame, uh, Back to the Future as well. Yep. There's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Matrix, I mean, maybe. I don't know if you can class that. Maybe. No, Terminator, no. that is definitely a time travel movie. Don't we... even get me started on that timeline. <laughs> <laughs> um, Doctor Who, although to be fair, I just give up trying to understand if it even is one cohesive timeline anymore. It's just an interesting series. Um, but yeah, we will definitely have to spend a few episodes on that, I think. Yeah. But my next iffy thing that I want to cover is Operation Overdrive. Right. Now, it had a great premise that it was basically a team of very skilled young individuals and some has been sort of architect that was like Indiana Jones, but not. Who, for whatever reason, had a son that you never found out who the mum was because it turned out he wasn't actually biological. He was an android. Yeah. Why? Was well, like, that never explained? No. Well, th no, it gets worse than that. It gets worse than that because I forgot how much detail this guy had put into the, like, the memory of this android to think that he was his child by photoshopping a young version of this person into family photos to make it seem like he had a whole life with him when he'd only been online for about a month. That is screwed up. Oh, no, no, no. It gets even worse. When they reveal, like, he is an android, that he's not human, the guy that, like, leads the team or the guy that brought the kids all together in the first place, his excuse for having the android was the fact that he just never had enough time to find the right woman. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. why not just go and adopt a kid then? Instead of build your own kid from Ikea, go... <laughs> uh. <laughs> just like, adopt a kid instead. I mean, the guy had a butler, for God's sake. Like, the butler could have brought the kid up. What do you reckon? He like took a few shopping trips to Ikea and PC World. <laughs> PC World, probably 
gadgets are us or something. I don't know. And I but... had to make his own version of Siri or Alexa. <laughs> oh my Christ. It was just, it's just such a bizarre idea. Like, the thing is, as well, is like when they reveal that he's an android, they just have his head on a table, disembodied from the rest of his body. And it's so freaky because it's like, it's like Triton from Red Dwarf, like just sh shocking out. Oh, no. Yeah. That, I saw, I remember seeing that and thinking, what's Ben talking about? Operation Overdrive. And then I was like, why is this so freaky? But after I watched it, I understood why. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that by the end of it, the. Obviously, the magical being that Sentinel Knight or something along those lines, I can never remember what he was, basically gave the android the ability to be human. At the end of the whole thing, he was like, what's this beast? I have a heart! And he's like, I'm alive! And it's like, great. But... <sighs> Why? Like, I don't understand... Like, why on earth would you make him human? Like, surely you'd make it more fun to make him an android and keep him as an android. Because that would mean that he's easier to look after and more low maintenance. And then if you argue with him, you just turn him off. Yeah. Or just have him on <laughs> mute. Well, I was going to say it's an advanced version of Time Out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but one thing which, um, William, which I wanted to go into is something which I found out ages ago which if none of you ever wondered where, because it was Ricardo Medina who was the original Red Ranger for Wild Force, and then he was in another Power Rangers series, which I cannot remember which one it was, but he was a samurai. Yeah, it was Power Rangers Samurai. He was the bad guy known as Decker, and he could shift between the demon form and the human form, and basically he was a samurai who was slain in battle his wife basically wanted to have him live like she because she was so consolable over the idea that he was dying so he basically was allowed a new life but there was two conditions one he was not allowed to remember his past life and two he had to hunt for the rest of his days for the ultimate fight for him to be able to pass over fully Otherwise, he'd be on the, walk the earth for eternity. What was the point in keeping him alive then? I don't know. It was just the twisted logic behind the bad guy of the series because plot. Yeah, well, if you ever, if any of you guys have wanted to wonder where he was, he's actually in prison, and he's been in well, prison ever since 2017. Well, the irony being the fact that he stabbed somebody quite, so many times, wasn't it? Like it was. Well, a... he was charged with voluntary manslaughter. It was a very br a brutal crime, but it was kind of ironic the fact that he was cast to play a very brutal character who happily slashed people to pieces with a samurai sword. Because I think, like, I think when they filmed like the samurai thing, I think it was. When they filmed that, I think it was after he was arrested and released the first time. Yeah. Because he got arrested in 20... When was it? I think, it's was 20... it? I think it was 2012, but I could be wrong. It wasn't too long before so I think he... they filmed the samurai bits after he was arrested, because he wasn't mm -hmm. charged at the time. Yes. Because there wasn't many scenes with him actually there a lot of the time they just mocked up the like demon form to replace why he wasn't there a lot which is a good sort of plot logic but again it was iffy at best yeah i mean like now he's like he was got a maximum sentence of six years but it's highly doubtable we'll ever see him in any power rangers projects ever again i mean i'm trying to figure out what what made him flip like there is there is no like logic well, behind it. Well, it was self defense because his roommate was like having an argument or he was drunk or something. But it's a load of cosplay. It's a very vague story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just like, how do you justify that? Because it wasn't just a simple like defense stab, it was a hell of a lot of like. <laughs> it was like with, it was with like an, a medieval style sword. It was something brutal, to say the least. I mean, I've seen the 
some of the photos that they had for the crime scene and it's just it's too graphic for youtube let's put it that way yeah but we can't control what you choose to google <laughs> no but i mean i'm trying to think of what else we can cover because there's a lot of iffy things within power rangers to say the least but i would have to say sticking towards wild force to a degree is that the big bad master org has a very iffy reason as to why he's the bad guy. Basically, there's an episode where they show some flashbacks in terms of who like, he was. Because him, uh, him, Cole's parents, the Red Ranger, like him and his parents were scientists and they were looking for this magical floating island called the Animaria. Yeah. His original name was Dr. Victor Adler, which just sounds like an evil scientist from the get-go. Uh, basically, he was just jealous of his colleagues' relationship, and that was basically why he offed them. Like, yeah, and then he decided to eat these wriggly beans, even though he had no idea what they were or what they did, but ha so, for some reason knew it was the remnants of Master Org, but didn't say how. <sighs> Again, like, this is Power Rangers. Like, the big questions always get skimmed over. It's just... You add enough like drama, you add enough random sound effects or explosions, and that's your show. <laughs> well, mind you, like there is even a few other things to cover, maybe in future episodes. Is some of them, if you can get away from some of the terrible writing, some of the plots are actually very, very dark. I mean, I think Wild Force with Master Org and creating like the different creatures is and coming across the different orgs is quite a dark story. Then you've got the story of Zanaku. The uh, the Wolf Ranger, mm -hmm. or Merrick, as he's also known, the Curse, which is the Curse, which I found that actually quite cool when I was when I was younger. But there's a lot of there's a lot of dark story. There's a lot, quite a few dark stories, which I found really quite good and really good writing. Yeah, I mean, it just begs the question as to why they do such disturbing stories sometimes, like. I know they're trying to make it a bit more interesting, but it's an iffy like line to walk in terms of a kid show. Like at the end of the day, it's meant to be you fight evil, you're the good guys versus the bad guys, and you win the day, and that's about it. Yeah, hence, but, hence the reason why, like when you see like slashes on bad guys or the Power Rangers, obviously they don't show blood. You can't show blood. So what do they do? For some reason, <laughs> whatever, whoever you hit, they're sparks. Yeah. I, I never understood that, the sparks thing. Whenever the Power Rangers get hit, obviously, in the real world, there'd be blood. But instead, they're sparks. But don't know why. Hmm. Maybe each of the villains are slightly metallic and the sharpness is just spark. I don't know. Yeah, even though, like, even though it ruins it when you're old, when, like, you get older, but all they really have is just a... All they really have is a helmet and a morph suit on. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your next point then, dude? Well, next well, one thing which I wanted to get on, which would probably be, uh, which would probably be a little bit later, which um, the last one would be, if you had to name like your very, like maybe a top five, top three, whatever, what would be like your top Power Rangers series? Uh, it would have to be Mighty Morphin, just because it was the beginning. It gave it was there from the beginning uh mystic force for my second favorite just because it was the style of the zords was a bit more transformative like there was a lot more possibilities than there was in other ones um and i'd say super mega force is probably my third favorite one, because the uh, the suits looked amazing, even though they were space pirates, which, again, was just weird logic, because in the Super Sentai one, it made more sense. For the Power Rangers, it was just there for the sake of being there. The, the idea that they could be any ranger was pretty amazing. Yeah. But it was just... The Silver Ranger is my favourite one from that entire series, from Super Mega Force. I don't know why... 
I just love the style, this, this, the helmet, the suit, and just everything about him was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the top three, which I would have to have, uh, Mighty Morphin, obviously, is there. Uh, Wild Force is my absolute favorite. I love it so much. And the other one, even though it wasn't as popular, but I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, my God, got, the name's gone out of my mind now. They collabed, a, they collabed a lot with Time Force. Oh, what was it? Lightspeed Rescue, that's it. Yes. That was probably like one of my other favorite ones. I don't know why. I just really liked it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can understand why, because it was a more of a space-bearing... Well, it was almost space-ish. But also, if I could fit Time Force in there, I liked the villains which they had, and I liked the whole arc which they had as well, which hmm. I just found the villains a lot more interesting, which even just wanting to know things like what language they spoke in, which was because then there was a whole thing with Wild Force when they teamed up with uh, the Wild Force Rangers when they were saying like they are half mutant, half org and so on, which made a really interesting story. Mm. I, it's, it's not often that they do a lot of episodes now where they combine other series. Like At the very least, I think you get Once in a Blue Moon, a cameo from one of a ranger... I mean, there was a cameo from the RPM Red Ranger in Samurai. But the funny thing was that the actor absolutely hated being Red Ranger. So they basically had him dub over and then have someone else wear the suit. And if that's not a snub to the idea of it, I don't know what is. Like there was, If he didn't want to be it, why use him? Like That's what I don't get. Oh, God, no. I don't think the kids would have even noticed anyway. But no, I mean, the thing that I found funny was that the logic why he didn't take off the suit was because he couldn't logically figure out whether or not he was able to breathe in their atmosphere from where he came from. Right. But yeah. the fact that his suit should be able to analyse this type of thing from the get-go, like that's a poor man's excuse. Of course it is. Of course it is. But that, there we go. That was been like... A lot of the darker side of Power Rangers, unless, Ben, you have anything to add. Just one final thing, which I completely forgot about with the Power Rangers movie, not the modern one, but the original one. Yeah, well, which, the 1995. Yeah, the 1995 one with Ivan Ooze, The Leap of Doom. So there was a scene where basically... Uh, where is it? The basically Ivan Ooze tells all the parents in Angel Grove to kill themselves. Yeah. I completely forgot about that. But we were trying to figure out last episode where all the parents were. Maybe it was just that Ivan Ooze. Christ on a bike. <laughs> Because <laughs> they basically they proceed to walk to a large sinkhole at a construction site, like zombies, in a Yeah, because, to... like, oh, yeah, I remember now, and the kids are, like, trying to push them back, isn't they? Yeah. They're like, all the construction workers, all the adults and everything like that. It's just... Christ! <laughs> I mean, this thing is, as well, reading this article, I forgot how bad it was, like, the kids obviously holding them back. They try even spraying them with fire hoses to keep them from falling to their deaths. It's just like, no! I know, but like, there's some certain things you can kind of get away with, but I think they knew that also adults were going to be going to go watch Mighty Morphin as well, so I think maybe they could get away with a little bit more, but Ivan Ooze was actually, what was actually I actually quite liked Ivan Ooze as a character. He was a decent character, to be fair, but I can't even remember how they defeated him in the end. I don't think it was that spectacular. It was just typical I, Power Rangers I style. Remember. I think was he blown up? I can't remember. I think he was. I think it was just typical Power Rangers logic that he just went kaboom, oh, and no, that was well, it. I think they actually sent him out to space somehow. I think. I can't remember. It, I will have to rewatch it some time. I'll have to rewatch so the end of these things. I really cannot remember. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for this. Name listening to us, Ran Raver Ramble, as always. Hence why this channel exists in the first place. But. Thank you for everybody for sticking to it, for sticking with us, and also the new subscribers as well, as we appreciate every single one of you. Hence, why 
we love doing what we do. And if you like listening to this kind of podcast style of content, we very much appreciate it. And it's not often that we get to plan at least two weeks in advance. So the way we do this, that it's Ben, then me, then Ben, then me. So it's going to be Ben's topic for next week, which is... It's going to be covering a very fever dream movie, Masters of the Universe. We just... we. Flipped it last week because it just made me laugh. I saw it the other week. It was basically a live adaptation of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I never knew it existed till I randomly came across it on TV the other night. And oh my dear Christ, what the hell was that pile of poop? I'm but, looking forward to researching this. Oh God. I mean... I'm not saying much now because otherwise I'm going to lose my train of thought for next week. And I will rewatch it beforehand. But word of warning, you will get your eyes completely burned by how crap the quality of everything in it is. I'll look forward to this one. So anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Very much appreciated by all of you. And I just want to say thank you for also for giving us the ability to do what we do. And the fact there's so many of you who like to watch this as well, and whatever views there are, comments, whatever, anything is very much appreciated. So thanks very much. This has been me and Ben, and these two guys who have remained pretty silent because I think he's in a pretty much comatose state from all the vodka that he's been drinking. Or his or his psyche's just on a holiday to Russia. But anyway, we'll see you guys around next week, either Saturday or Sunday. So keep an eye out on our Instagram and also our personal Instagrams. And so you can see when we're next going to go live. So thank you very much. And bugger off. <laughs> see you later. See you.